Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about new research that suggests, well, that we basically know very little about the expansion of the universe. And more specifically what we're going to be discussing today is this new study or actually two different studies that have discovered that the universe very close to us is expanding a lot faster than we believed it was. Anyway, let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. And so, first of all, let's start with the idea of the expansion of the universe. Back in the days, Edwin Hubble discovered that the further into the universe you look, the faster things seem to be moving away from you. And he uh, eventually started studying this. We then were able to prove him correctly, and all of this was done with the super famous Hubble telescope. And over the last few decades, the scientists were quite um, thoroughly trying to figure out how fast is the universe actually expanding. Some of the initial values uh, were equivalent to approximately 50 kilometers per second for every 3.3 million light years. All right, let me give you some perspective here. Here is the Milky Way galaxy, that's where we are. There is the nearby Andromeda galaxy at a distance of about 2.5 million light years. And so 3.3 million is just a little bit over that. So at this distance, so essentially right here somewhere, the universe itself is moving away from us at what's known as the Hubble constant. And the initial values for this were about 50 kilometers per second. But since then, this value has been revised to about 67 kilometers per second. In other words, if you were right here and basically just completely still, you would still be moving away from us at a speed of about 67 kilometers per second. At least that was our previous assumption. But the recent research that you can find in the description below, and this is one of the papers that was recently published, talks a little bit more about this and recalculates the value um, almost entirely. And here's the thing though, it doesn't mean that we were wrong about the 67 kilometers per second value. As a matter of fact, uh, what they're suggesting is that that value is still correct, especially because that value was calculated using the so-called background radiation that you see on the screen right here. So the 67 kilometers per second value seems to apply to the really, really old electromagnetic radiation or essentially light that came from the universe. The more recent value, the value from this paper, actually applies to galaxies that are a lot closer to us. And let's start by talking a little bit about how they've actually established this value. To create this so-called distant ladder, the scientists had to look at different galaxies and different objects in those galaxies. And for this study, they even used the nearby Large Magellanic Cloud to make sure that they have very accurate results. This so-called cosmic distance ladder is normally formed by trying to look at several objects. One of those objects is what we call a Cepheid variable. Uh, you can actually find the video where I do explain what these are, but in essence, a Cepheid variable is a type of a star that uh, changes its brightness. It goes up and down, up and down um, very, very regularly. And what's interesting is that it also depends on the mass of the star. So there's actually a relationship between the time in variations and also the total brightness or total mass of this particular star. And this relationship was originally discovered by this wonderful lady about whom you can read in the description below as well. And there's an article that I posted in there. And her name is Henrietta Levitt and she is, well, essentially, as it says in the title, one of the forgotten astronomers. But back in the days she was able to discover this really awesome uh, relationship and today we use this very regularly in determining distances. We also use um, what's known as type 1a supernova, which is... So this right here is a white dwarf and all white dwarfs have what's known as a Chandrasekhar limit. It's a limit um, of mass at which, if they ever pass it, they basically go supernova and all these supernova almost always have very, very, very similar brightness because the mass is usually the same. And the mass here has to be about 1.34 masses of the sun. And you can actually learn about this particular limit right there above my head. And so using type 1a supernova, a scientist can also determine distances by looking at those tiny spots in the skies, seeing where the supernova occurred. And then by looking at the distant supernova, 
and um, obviously those will not be as bright as the supernova near us, they can determine the distance simply by observing the change in brightness. And so this is another very accurate way of us measuring distances. And so by using these two major techniques, along with the so-called eclipsing binaries, which are usually two stars that kind of come in front of each other and uh, block each other's brightness, the scientists were able to very accurately calculate the Hubble constant to be approximately 73 kilometers per second. In other words, about 9% higher than before. And the thing is, this value was confirmed by another team that calculated a very similar value. And this is kind of interesting because they've all used the same or similar data and all of these galaxies were relatively close to us. And so this is where it gets interesting. We have two values of Hubble constant, both suggesting that the universe expands, both have very, very, very low error, and both have been confirmed by many different teams. On the one hand, we have the values from, well, basically very, very distant universe from approximately 13 billion years ago, and this value suggests that the universe was expanding at about 67 kilometers per second. But on the other hand, we have nearby galaxies that suggest that the expansion is closer to about 73 kilometers per second. And that's kind of all we know. And we know that both of these values seem to be very accurate unless the fundamental physics that we use to calculate these values are incorrect. And so this creates a kind of a dilemma. There's definitely something missing in our understanding of the universe, in our understanding of the expansion of the universe, and obviously in how it progressed through time. And right now there is no good explanation. But obviously we have a lot of ideas on what could be happening here. So one of the explanations is that, well, maybe the universe actually accelerated its expansion over time. In other words, it was never really expanding constantly. It accelerated in the last 13.8 billion years from initial speed of 67 kilometers per second to the speed of 73. We don't know why. It's actually not explained. Another explanation is that maybe the formula that we used to discover at least the um, expansion of the universe a long time ago is not precise or wrong in some way. Uh, we actually use a formula that uses what's known as Einstein's cosmological constant. And because it's a constant, we've always believed that it's an unchanging property of, well, space and of course time. In essence, it's the constant that suggests that the universe just by itself has an unusual property to expand. But if the constant is not constant, it means that a lot of our formula are probably incorrect and a lot of our calculations have to be redone. Then we have another explanation that takes into account uh, dark energy, which could have maybe existed in larger quantities before and then it disappeared. But the craziest explanation suggests that maybe the universe itself is actually shaped differently from what we believe it is or maybe it has different types of density. So the part of the universe where we are located right now could be low in density, so the things here expand faster. Whereas if you look at the farther away distances or somewhere else in the universe, the expansion is much slower. Now, unfortunately, none of these really make sense just yet, and a lot of these kind of violate math here or there, so we don't really have a good explanation. We really have no idea why the universe today seems to expand faster, or the universe near us seems to expand faster. Because um, if the value that we've just calculated is correct, this could also imply that the universe is not as old as we believed it is. So there's a lot of implications from this particular study, actually from the two studies that were done in parallel, and they both show that we just don't really know enough about the universe. Now, there is some good news though. There are new studies coming that are going to recalculate these values, but most importantly, the super famous LIGO detector that has detected the black hole collisions and the neutron star collisions is also capable of very accurately measuring the expansion of the universe. The recent value that it got was 70 kilometers per second, but it did have about 15% error. But as we gather more data from various locations, as we detect more and more neutron star collisions, which we have been actually detecting at least once a week now, by the end of next year, we'll hopefully have enough data to very accurately calculate the average expansion of the universe from different locations around the universe. Hopefully by sometime next year, we'll have a better idea, but for now, that's it. That's all we know, and unfortunately, that's where I'm going to stop this video. It's a big mystery, 
It's an interesting study, very accurate calculations and extremely well done observations, but it created more questions than it was able to answer. On that note, thank you so much for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else and subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and I'll see you tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye bye.